His companionship was tireless. His support was unconditional. So blessed was this individual that Allah, the most just Al-Adil, allowed him to accompany the messenger beneath the earth just as he had accompanied him above it. Even today, mere inches separate the graves of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and Abu Bakr. Though famously known as Abu Bakr, his real name was Abdullah, son of Uthman. He was referred to as a siddiq the one who is always attesting to the truth and living by it. A title which Ali ibn Abi Talib swore had descended from the heavens. The Iman, the faith of Abu Bakr, weighed more than the Iman of the entire Ummah combined. And this is not a claim made lightly. For there were many great men and women who were alive during the time of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. However, in an expression of utmost awe, Umar ibn al-Khattab himself would say, Lawuzina. إيمان أبي بكر مع إيمان الناس لرجح إيمان أبي بكر. If the iman, the faith of Abu Bakr was weighed against the iman of the entire ummah, his side of the scale would be heavier. لا إله إلا الله. سبحان الله what a spectacle of a human being he must have been. What spectacular heights must Abu Bakr have reached during his lifetime to be praised like this by Umar? Abu Bakr was no ordinary individual, but a, a true wonder of Allah's creation. Abu Bakr was, by the way, if this had been his only virtue, it would have been enough. He was the most beloved of men to the Prophet Muhammad You and I, we can claim to love the Messenger, but how many of us are sure that we are loved in return? As for you and I, we're never going to have this type of guarantee in the life of this world. As for Abu Bakr, the matter was different. The Prophet once asked, who is the most beloved of people to you? He said, Aisha, that's his wife. And then the questioner, he said, no, I mean from the men. The Prophet wasallam said, her dad, meaning Abu Bakr, Allahu Akbar. Then the questioner asked, who was next? Who was next? And the Prophet was continually naming individuals until the questioner just stopped asking because of the fear that perhaps he would be named last. So not only was Abu Bakr so loved by the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, there was a unanimous agreement amongst the companions that the greatest of this Ummah after its Prophet was none other than Abu Bakr. Abdullah son of Umar ibn Khattab would say, we used to compare the people as to who was better at the time of the Messenger of Allah wasallam, And we used to regard, i.e. the companions, we used to regard Abu Bakr as the best then Umar ibn al-Khattab, then Uthman ibn Affan. And those very words were echoed by none other than Ali ibn Abi Talib. So how ignorant must a person be to claim that there were ill feelings harbored between the companions and the household of the Prophet wasalam, or that they had competed for worldly positions after he died. This type of behavior is unbecoming of the average 21st century Muslim, let alone those who are divinely selected to be the students of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The son of Ali ibn Abi Talib by the name of Muhammad ibn al-Hanafiyyah. He asked his father Ali, who is the best of people after the Messenger of Allah? He said Abu Bakr. His son said, then who father? He said, then Umar. So his son said, I was afraid that my father would then say Uthman after Umar. So I said, then you dad, it's you? He said, ma ana illa rajulun min al-Muslimin. I'm just an ordinary person from the Muslims. Allahu Akbar. An amazing display of humbleness from Ali ibn Abi Talib despite the fact that he was most certainly not an average Muslim. Imagine for a moment what it could possibly be like to be guaranteed paradise in the life of this world. Imagine living day to day, eating, drinking, trading, sleeping, praying, washing, shopping, all whilst knowing that you're going to paradise for sure. Imagine that the verses of Quran which speak of paradise and its delights definitely apply to you. Abu Bakr was one such man. And that's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam once asked his companions, who is fasting today? And Abu Bakr, he said, I am a messenger of Allah. He asked, has anyone followed a funeral procession today? And Abu Bakr, he said, I have a messenger of Allah. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked, has anyone fed a poor person today? Abu Bakr, he said, I have a messenger of Allah. And then the Prophet finally asked, has anyone visited an ill person today? Abu Bakr, he said, I have. O Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam remarked, 
Whenever these qualities gather in any one person, paradise will definitely be his home. So not only did he have this guarantee, listen to this, Abu Bakr will also be invited to enter paradise through every one of the eight gates of Jannah. Among these gates, you have the gate of prayer, the gate of charity, the gate of jihad, the gate of fasting called Ar-Rayyan. And Abu Bakr learned that people would be invited to enter paradise through the gate according to which act of worship he or she had excelled in. And so in a display of titanic aspirations and limitless hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he asked the Prophet, will anybody be invited to enter paradise through every one of the gates of Jannah? All eight. And the Prophet said, Naam wa arju an takuna minhum, yes, and I hope you will be one of them. In another narration, he said, Naam wa anta minhum, yes, and you are one of them. You are one of them. You see, a question reveals so much about the inquirer. A seasoned scholar can garner a lot of unspoken detail and insight into a questioner's personality and aspiration simply by virtue of his or her inquiry. So on that note, take a moment to reflect on Abu Bakr's huge ambitions how positively he viewed Allah. Far from being modest in his expectations of Allah, he took aim at all eight gates of paradise and Allah did not let him down. So do the same. Our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, إِذَا سَأَلْتُمُ اللَّهَ فَسَلُوهُ الْفِرْدَوْسِ فَإِنَّهُ أَوْسَطُ الْجَنَّةِ وَأَعَلَى الْجَنَّةِ وَفَوْقَهُ عَرْشُ الرَّحْمَانِ وَمِنْهُ تَفَجَّرُ أَنْهَارُ الْجَنَّةِ He said, when you ask Allah Almighty, ask him for Al-Firdaus because this is the name of the very middle of paradise at its very highest part. And above it is the throne of Allah and from it spring forth the rivers of paradise. So it's key that we rid ourselves of this underachieving, scraping a pass mentality. And that we are never satisfied with mediocrity. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was foremost in all acts of righteousness. He refused second place. So naturally, he will be foremost in the hereafter. Allah Almighty, He said, وَالسَّابِقُونَ السَّابِقُونَ Those who are foremost will be the foremost. What does that mean? The scholars, they say in beautiful words. السَّابِقُونَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ إِلَى الْرِضْوَانِ وَالْجَنَّاتِ هُمُ السَّابِقُونَ فِي الدُّنْيَا إِلَى الْخَيْرَاتِ وَالطَّاعَاتِ وَعَلَى قَدْرِ السَّبْقِ هُنَا يَكُونُ السَّبْقُ هُنَاكِ They say, the first to enter paradise and to earn the pleasure of Allah in the hereafter will be the ones who were first in performing good deeds in the life of earth today. And how foremost you shall be then depends on how foremost you are today. So ask yourself the question, sister, why should I, for example, be the last who adopts the hijab? Brother, why should I be the last to put out the cigarette for my family and friends? Why should I wait for my friends to start praying before I start to? Why should I always be the last to set a vision for my life? Why should I be the last who joins the bandwagon of the God-fearing and change my ways? Take the initiative. Be the first to repent, the first to excel, become a model, lead the way, influence others and aspire to become an Imam in goodness. We beg you, O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to grant us Al-Firdaus, the highest parts of Jannah, to inspire our hearts to crave it, and to inspire our limbs to do what it requires.